Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Back. We are back. Yes, sir. We are back. We are back. Yes, sir. We are back. And we are live. We are live. We are live. That for the people tonight. We are live. We are live. Welcome, welcome, welcome to High School Basketball Weekly. This episode is the day New York City stood still. It's crazy out here now. It's a lot going on. But I think this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful episode. For all my people coming on tonight, make sure we keep it respectful. Make sure we don't curse. We're going to have kids listening, parents listening. So let's just keep it in order. We got some more people jumping online. But with saying that, I am your host, Glenn Poole Harding, here with my guy, Brian Riker. It's High School Basketball Weekly, baby. How you doing, Brian? I am so excited for today, man. I ever since I hung up, I'm like, I can't wait to get back on. <laughs> I don't know about you. Today we actually supposed to be off, correct? Correct. <laughs> where, where we supposed to be right now? You know, I want to say somewhere in the city, but I can't remember. <laughs> Maybe Queens, maybe? Maybe Karnaseka Arena. <laughs> My guy, Alan Kiss, has it right. And the nightmare continues. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Chariot Games. Chariot Man Gamers says, Lord have mercy. I wish we had a button for that. I would play that so many times. And it would <laughs> Be a lot to the PSAL. <laughs> oh, oh, man. All right. So, listen. Let's get serious real quick. Um, as y'all all know, the game between South Shore and Eagle Academy, Brooklyn, has been canceled. Right? They have been canceled. Um, yes. Yes, definitely. And we're not here to point any fingers tonight. Right? But we have to hold some people accountable because, again, we are now getting another dose of reality where teams are being disqualified at the last minute. Not even the day before no more. This happened the day of. Right? Yeah. So we're going to have some guests stopping through. Those people that wanted to come on, y'all know what to do. Got to go to my DM and leave your email address email. or put it in the chat and I'll get you on the show so you can speak. But before we do that, I just want to give y'all a little history, right? Of what's happening. The origins of the public school athletic league came from the appointment in early 1903 of Luther Halsey Gullick as the director of physical training for New York public school system. Compared to the other cities 
the athletic program for the New York boroughs were backwards, underdeveloped, and rift with con- and rift with corruption. Sounds familiar, right? It's crazy. Gulick found semi truant boys playing baseball for schools they did not attend, and that there were much unsportsmanlike conduct and dishonesty on the playing fields. Only a small percentage of actual students participate in athletics. He saw a serious need for reform and devised a grandiose plan to form a new league, the PSAL, that will involve most of the students' populations, grade school, high school, and working with two influential New Yorkers, General George Wingate, who Wingate High School is named after, right? member of the Board of Education, and James E. Sullivan, Secretary of Amateur Athletics. Presented in October 1903, so over 100 years ago, fam, so we got to evolve, and it has evolved, to the superintendent of schools, William H. Maxwell. It's named after Maxwell High School, which doesn't exist anymore, I don't think if it's still around, pardon me. He went the concurrence of the school board and approved by Gullick's plan. The PSL was started as a prevention for kids dropping out of schools, hence saying the truants, right? This was created as a prevention because They wanted to keep kids in school. Now, this is very important because, you know, you have the athletic director who has the responsibility to assist the principal in the organization, administration, and supervision of the PSL sports programs. He or she is responsible for administrating all policies and procedures, working within the confines of the rules and bylaws of the PSL. In New York City, the AD is a part-time position with over 10 or more teams to govern with guidance counselors and attendance workers. Not to mention if the school has other schools inside of them. Nevertheless, it's a tough position. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if everyone did their due diligence, no one will be ineligible and we will have a city championship game, right? Even if those people who govern the PSEL uh, weren't on point, whether they were on point or not, um, I think the more on point the schools are and the teams are, the ADs and the coaches, no one gets disqualified. But my problem is the last minute disqualifications of the schools, which I feel is a travesty. All right? How many pe- people in the PSCL know the DOE structures or the systems? Kids need the five and one with three major classes passed, 90% attendance rate and so on and so forth. We could be here forever explaining all the things that kids need to do to stay eligible to play this game. Again, we're not here to point fingers, but I think the day that we found out the PSL canceled the games today, me and my guy, Coach, Brian Reinkirk was definitely, definitely devastated and said we had to come on tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, very well said, Pooh. And like we said, it starts with the kids. You know, that that's that's our main concern. That's our goal. And as adults, we gotta we gotta handle business. We gotta make sure that we set these kids up for success. Um, Cause that's the main goal. We, we want to make sure that these kids are successful for the next level. 
whether they can continue sports or whether they can't. You know, you want to make them better people off the court. You want to teach them life lessons. And, you know, these kids work really hard. And a lot of them buy in and give you all that they can. And they're trusting you. A lot of them don't have guidance as well. So as a coach, you've got to make sure that your team is completely doing the right thing. And, you know, as a league, I think they definitely have to do better staying connected to the teams because there's got to be better communication before the season, in my opinion. And that's where, you know, a lot of coaches have talked to us over the weeks about checks and balances. And I think it starts right there because with so much, so many kind of things happen and people moving around, especially in New York City, um, to all these different schools and kids kind of bouncing around, We've got to make sure, you know, that rosters are set in. Everything's got to get cleared because, listen, that's what other leagues do. And, and that's what should be going on here. Everything should be getting taken care of before the season. And then, you know, right before the playoffs, everything should be checked. And, and that would probably lead to there being no doubt and everything would be under control. But... You know, the, the saddest thing is, like Pooh said, is the last second cancellation. Um, not a lot of explanation and just a lot of confusion and anger. And I'm with Pooh and we've been adamant about it all day. You know, definitely a sad day for, you know, the PSAL. And it's even affected other people just, just typing about it, uh, tweeting about it. You know, a lot of people ready to pounce. And, you know, it's just... It shouldn't be this on such a great a great day, especially, you know, with two great teams and the ladies playing right before them. Most definitely, most definitely, most definitely. Well, our first guest up tonight, um, I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Uh, always following the channel. Um, definitely a uh, representation of Ego Academy. Always see him at the games, always showing love, and I wanted to give him a chance um, because, of course, you got people on both sides that are devastated by this information that was, you know, laid out today. So, well, brother, how you doing? Hagens, what's that? Introduce yourself to the uh, high school basketball weekly crowd that we have out here. How you guys doing? How you guys doing? You can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Got you brother. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. What's up, Brian? What's up? What's up, Boo? Uh, how you doing, brother? How you doing? Um, my name is Ron Higgins. I've been working at Eagle Academy since the Eagle has started, um, since 2009. So I've been around the uh, Eagle program before. We even had a basketball team before we were, you know, people knew we existed. Um, so pretty much I help out with the basketball program and I'm just, you know, a founder of Eagle Academy. Show, show everybody, show everybody that 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 sweatshirt you got on, brother. That that beautiful logo, man. And, it's, it's, and it's, books, right? That's books, right? Books, books over basketball. That's right. Books, book first. That's a that's a book. So it's an eagle, but it's also a book. And, and what was some of the things that you was uh, devastated about after hearing the news today? Well, first and foremost, I was upset for the kids because they really wanted to play a basketball game today, and um. Our seniors especially, and um, I mean, everybody. The kids were really upset, and um, you no, know, regardless of anything, they want they like to play. They want to play basketball. So whether we play in South Shore or wherever, like the kids were prepared to play a basketball game today, and this decision at the last minute hurt the kids, and, and I think I posted it on my Instagram. They were just sitting there, like, just, like, shell-shocked that they couldn't play today. Yeah, and, and that's, that's exactly what we, like, didn't want to hear, you know, and you, you do such a great job with this ego program. And, and I kind of touched on it a little bit in my monologue, how I'd like to bridge the gap between programs and, you know, kind of like the athletic department side of the PSAL, making sure kids are eligible, uh, make sure kids are eligible. Can you talk about how you guys, how you guys kind of handle that at Eagle, especially, you know, with, with your role, how you've been telling me, you know, you guys make sure, that all these guys are ready to go, you know, before the ball even starts. Yeah, so, like, first and foremost, we're, like I said, we're an academic school first. Like, we're a 6-12 to 12 school. 
Um, so it's all boys. Um, the kids know that, you know, academics comes first before anything. Um, sports, you can't play sports or participate in sports if you're not academically sound or doing what you have to do in the classroom. And that's part of the Eagle Academy um, school's um, mantra period. So when kids come into school, they know that, you know, academics and studying is is first and foremost. Um, we use sports kind of as a motivator for kids to excel academically. And we expect all our kids to excel academically um, first. So when um, we have kids academic, um, athletically that come into school, um, we have a team that makes sure that the kids are academically sound, um, not just for report cards, but during progress reports and during the year. So um, I check grades um, periodically and we make sure that all our athletes and um, on all sports, like not just basketball or like sell so that they can play basketball and participate. And if they aren't, they can't play at all. And that's no, no, that's it. Yeah. And on a positive note, my guy CK8 said, uh, Jakar Sanders of Eagle Academy is heading to play Division One ball in Siena in the MAC conference. And, you know, just for the scenes in general, whether South Shore wins or Eagle Academy wins, someone would have had that feeling that I had in 86 and winning the city championship and we won our city championship in St. John's. So it would have been full circle for me to see kids win it the same place that I won it at, you know, over 40 something years ago. And this, this, it means a lot. I'm telling you as a grown man right now, and I'm telling y'all as a grown man right now, I still brag and talk about my city championship. Yeah. Cause that's course. how much it meant to me. Yeah, of course. You know, so, and, and, and another thing you was saying to me about, uh, you know, holding people accountable, right? Um, mm -hmm. We, you know, we was talking about, you know, you know, other program, if other programs is holding their kids accountable, a lot of these things will happen, right? Just share yes. some of the things you, you saying without, you know, naming names and pointing fingers at people, just the overall perspective of what you were saying. Yeah, so like, I don't, you know, I don't want to take shots at anybody else, but I know at Eagle, you know, but not even at Eagle. It's, it's. I think it's important that we as adults hold the kids accountable, or, or we hold other adults accountable for you know the kids succeeding because that's what we're in it for. Like we're not in it for us. It's not like I don't do the stuff for the kids for me. I don't get anything like any extra money for you know making sure the kids are passing. Like it's about the kids. So you know, as adults, winning shouldn't supersede you know, what the kids are doing or how the kids proceed after high school, because after high school, these all, kids all have to go somewhere and, you know, be adults and live life. So if we're prioritizing winning and not grades and academics, then what do we, what do the kids do after high school? So like you win the championship or you get some accolades for high school. And then after that, what's, what's next? You know, the next level is more important than just winning high school championships. That's not the ultimate goal here at Eagle. We, we try to make sure that the kids are sound and like, and it's not just the basketball kids. Like we have kids like that, you know, excel on other things. We have lacrosse, we have other programs that the kids excel academically, athletically. And it's not just all about, you know, our success or like, you know, and, and I, it's not about us. It's about the kids. It's well said. And, you know, I want to, I want to give you a little, you know, room to Speak a little and speak your mind for sure, even beyond this. But I just want to ask you uh, one more question, at least on my end. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, what have you guys figured out? Um, are you are you guys moving forward to play um, Stepanak in the next game? Have you guys even talked about that in any situation yet at all, or still processing all of today? Um, I, that's not something I I know as of yet. Um, Coach Kev probably couldn't better answer that, or maybe maybe can I don't know. But uh, as far as I know, I haven't heard anything. Um, I just was primarily dealing with the kids and like talking to kids and trying to you know cheer them up and keep them their spirits high. I know um, Eddie and a few of the kids were really upset because they really wanted to play. So you know that's as far that's how as, as far as I got with it today. I don't know what the PSL what the plan is. Um, Coach Kev or one of the coaches probably can answer better than that. But on my side, as far, you know, as being around the kids and helping them, I just was trying to help them out today with that. Yo, listen, I, I was talking to Coach today. Hope he comes on. Kev Hamilton, if you're checking this out, please come on because, you know, we, we talked about 
you know, if basketball is a mental game, right? Mm -hmm. If we know that this going to play a part in them having some stress, mm -hmm. right? Guys like, you know, Eric uh, and, and Jakai who, and a few others who are seniors, and even for the South Shore shot, because I just don't want to lean on both sides, but since we have you on right now, we're talking about Eagle Academy, um, it could cause some, uh, 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 a lot of stress on the player to know that they're going to, you know, just have a forfeit as, as a win for the city championship, knowing they had a magical year last year. Definitely. You know, so, man, I, I appreciate you, brother. Um, those people who are on Instagram, because we are streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, please keep your comments, because, you know, we're going to have to get some of you guys out of here. Um, if y'all talking reckless, please, please keep it positive. Um, yo, uh, Mr. Hagers, I thank you for coming on. Yes. Oh. Appreciate you. Um, if you want to stick around, um, right now we got Mike Larry coming on. All right. So I I'll want stick to around. I'll be listening. I bet. All right. Check thank you, guys. All right. No doubt. All right. See you later, my man. All right. See you later, Brian. <laughs> All right. Those of you who want to come on, DM me your. Email address if you want to come on the show. DM me your email address. And as long as you keep it positive, because soon you start talking reckless, we are getting you out of here and blocking you forever. Trust that. All right? But now I want to bring on my guy. Uh, if you don't know about him, you know, you ain't outside. Uh, <laughs> my guy, Mike Larry, uh, one of the top uh, New York City street ball announcers we have here in New York City. So... I want to bring them on. And look, everybody's affected by this, not just people who work in the schools and, and coaching the schools. You got guys who's really out here to do it for the kids. All right? For sure. And I appreciate Mr. Higgins for coming on, providing insight for Eagle Academy. Thank you. Oh, yeah. My brother, what's happening? What's good, King? How you? How's everything? Oh, man, I'm a highly blessed and favored, man. I can't complain, brother. I can't yes, complain. Indeed. Yes, indeed. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Good. So just tell everybody uh, a little bit of something about yourself. I just gave a little, you know, smidget of what you do, man. Just get everybody who's not familiar with what you do. Let them know how much <clears throat> you normally, represent New York City. Definitely represent New York City. Normally it sounds like this. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm your man from across the bridge where hip-hop got started from the Boogie Down Bronx, New York, and they called me yours truly, Mike Larry. And they get different when I'm on. You now tapped in with the basketball heads. That's normally what it sounds like. You know, I ain't got a lot of energy. I had a long day at work. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, I, mean, I just jumped on a live real quick just to tap in because it's a lot. Oh, I don't know what just happened. Hold on one second, fellas. We here. Okay. Um it's it's a lot that it's a lot that goes on in the basketball community. And I believe uh with this that happened, right, is as an announcer. I watch the kids. I don't go to a lot of PSAL games because of my job, work days, me and my kids, and things of that nature. But I'm always tapping in to see how it goes. So during playoff time, I try to catch a playoff game. If not, try to catch the championship game. And today, um, when I got news of how it went down, it was just, it was just crazy for me. Um, uh, I see. I'm looking at some of the comments. Uh, which said Mike got the Mac Long Island. So yeah, 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 I, yeah. real quick, I do. Um, I did Rucker Park. Um, Bolden Mac in Long Island, Tri-State, LES Express, TBT, which is the Million Dollar Tournament, um, Under Armour Elite 24, back-to-back -back years, uh, work with Nike, Adidas, ESPN, um, currently working on a documentary. So that's just a, a, a list of things that I have done. So, yeah, I'm in the basketball community heavy. Um, so make sure you tap in and follow up. Uh, but, however, back to what I was saying, um, you know, these kids is affected. I, I heard uh, um, Puha said um, – these kids is affected mentally, right? For this moment to happen like this, uh, a lot of things that we deal with in the world, even as adults, it's coping skills, right? We have triggers. And 
this could be a trigger, somebody forfeiting the game, um, somebody quitting, right? Quitting is a trigger for some people, right? I know for me, I have a hard time when people just walk away out of my life with no explanation. It's like, dag, I've, I've been in your life all this time. You just walk away with no explanation. That's a trigger for me. You understand? Right. However, I've learned how to cope with that because life goes on. So are we teaching these kids how to cope with the fact that they had got a disqualification win? And for the ones that got disqualified, that put in the time, that went to classes, that got all the A's and B's and did and stayed eligible for the tournament, for the um, playoffs. And now you mean to tell me because someone missed something, right? I have to end like my senior year, especially if I'm a senior, I got to end my senior year like this. Oh man, it's a, it's a tough position to be in. Um, so I'm just, I'm personally praying for it don't affect them crazy to the point where it's like, I, it's whatever when it's not whatever, because it affects you. You understand? So sad day, sad day for the PSAL. And I played for the PSAL. I wish it didn't have to end like this. Uh, um, something similar happened to me my senior year of high school. So I know the feeling. Um, uh, first round of the playoffs, we won. Second round of playoffs, we had to forfeit because the kid played that wasn't eligible. And I was sick because it's like, yo, I can't. This is my senior year. What you mean we ain't make the play? We put in work. So uh, it's, it's, it's tough. It's definitely tough. Yeah, it, it, it is, man. And, and like uh, Jeffrey Montgomery said, it goes deeper than that, right? So we we about to get deep, right? We yeah. about to get deep about what, what's really going on, right? Mm -hmm. So today, I got a call. Yo, Pooh, I don't mean to cut you off real quick, but yeah. I do want to give a shout out to Eagle BK. Um, all of, every I want to give a shout out to every kid. If I could individually name every roster, I sure would because they don't understand. And I got a, I got something on my page, right? It's a little clip of me walking. And I say, if you understood the magnitude of my pain, you would understand the magnitude of my praise, mm. right? And I always say, if you understand the magnitude of my pain, you will understand the magnitude of my smile, right? And a lot of people don't understand that if I really had to, if, if I could, I would give all of these kids their, their praise and their flowers because it's not easy to endure. You don't know what they're dealing with at home. You don't know who's coming to practice because practice is the only place they got to go. It's a lot that deals with it. You understand? So, man, I I, I feel for the kids. Nah, same here. Definitely rocking horse. We're, nobody's making judgments, but we we have to. We have a right to give our opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a right to give our opinion and what we think about what and what we feel about what's going on. But like I was about to say. I got a call today from a group of women who is about their business. <laughs> and when I'm telling you they are about their business, they are about their business, right? And they gave me a rundown of what actually happened. So I'm gonna give I'm gonna get everybody caught up to what happened, right? Mm -hmm. We had to go back, and I hate to resurface a lot of things that I mentioned on prior show, but prior shows but here's the deal so in the Brooklyn in the borough championships out of all the boroughs you had Thomas Jefferson with that was singled out because they supposedly had a, an eligible player right <clears throat> they appealed their case they were disqualified for the borough championship but they got to play in the playoffs. Correct? Mm -hmm. Everybody, so everybody follow me. Everybody follow me now. So now, once they played in the playoffs, they beat Stevenson. They beat Eagle Bronx. Correct. Correct? Let me know if I getting something wrong. Correct. I don't have the I don't I don't remember word for word, but I'm so I, what you're saying right now is all information for me. So I'm like the people watching right now. I'm getting it <laughs> as, as you talking. So I may not agree, but it's not because it's only because I I don't speak on stuff I don't know. So right, but this I, is this you know is I mean? actually this is actually what yeah. happened. Like yeah, I'm not, so I'm listening. I'm I'm in, I'm 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 learning just like the viewers are learning and, right now. And, 
do it live. It's great. It's there great. you go. This is this is all live. So yeah. So now the day before the final four, right? Just like the day before the Brooklyn champions, the Brooklyn final four. Mm-hmm. The day before the final four. For the city playoffs, Jefferson's ruled in those boo or disqualified again. Again. Mm. Now, I'm not going to go into the in particulars because they was disqualified. Let's just say that, right? Yeah. Was it right? Did Jefferson have all the information intact according to these? Group of people that I spoke to, yes, all the paperwork is fine, dandy, but I guess the PSL is so different, so they disqualified them, right? Before you before you continue, host, because I know we got a lot of people. I got to do some with my daughter. I'm going a, I'm to a stay tapped in, but I'm going to log off, off the right, live right, right now. We, we I'm going to stay we tapped here. in, all right? Yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. I'm going to stay tapped in. I just got to get something for my daughter. Go all ahead, right? go ahead. All right. All right. So... Now, Eagle Bronx and Stevenson were scheduled to play because South Shore had won their playoff games and they were sitting, waiting back to see who they play. That's right. Right? That's right. Eagle Bronx and South Shore, I mean, Eagle Bronx and Stevenson played in Eagle Bronx won. Correct. Correct? Yep. The following day, Eagle Bronx and Stevenson was di disqualified. Correct. Now we like, what the hell is going on? Y'all allowed them to play. <clears throat> yep. Y'all said Jefferson was the only team that was supposedly disqualified or had ineligible players. Yep. So now these two teams play, and now they're disqualified. It's like, okay, what do we believe? Now, whatever the case may be, All this happened in real time. We getting the information. We getting pieces and pieces of information. Yeah. But these ladies were so thorough. When I'm telling you, it felt like I was I was talking to the FBI, CIA, government <laughs> officials because they were so on point. They had all the information, and I was like, "Damn, I got that." Well, we we got that too. We got that. Oh, we, we had that before you. Oh, okay. Woo. But then, but then, but then, but then, as we going on, as we going on, Jefferson, head coach, Lawrence Pollard, said, you know what? We need to fight because he was motivated to do what he needed to do to fight for his kids. So I'm going to go down swinging. They met with the chancellor, I guess, and the powers that be. And if, if it wasn't in the room, I don't know. I know they met with the powers that be for him to appeal his case. And after a few hours, they said, your team is still disqualified. So we're just going to move on and let South Shore play against Eagle Academy Brooklyn. Who had beaten Brooklyn Collegiate in the final four. Yes, and boys and girls, right? And, they, and right, the boys and girls and they beat Brooklyn Collegiate, correct? It's a lot, it's a lot to soak up. Um I know it's a lot of people on <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Definitely. Definitely. Listen, 
these ladies are fierce. These ladies are warriors. And while everybody thinking is guys and coaches and other people was going on, you have no idea. And I tell people, don't start pointing fingers, don't start guessing because you don't know. You don't know the half. And I just say this, man. Somehow, the most high have put me in these places that I didn't ask to be in. But he felt that I was the righteous person to be in the center of all this. And I dragged my guy, Coach Byron Ron Kirk, with me because <laughs> we represent the platform together. That's right. And it's it just been a lot. So now we're all set because we're supposed to have a city championship game today and I put up the flyers, you know, because this is what we do. Uh, even though people are mad at me and, you know, coming at me because I could go on my phone and show you text messages from people. I don't know if they're part of the PSL, work for the PSL. Uh, uh, are they married to people in the PSL? I have no idea, but I know I'm getting some messages from some people that's coming at me talking about the platform and the negative thing that we're doing and allowing people to come up here and spread lies. Hold up. I told you, we don't make the rules or enforce the rules. We just report the news. Just letting people have their opinion, man, which they're allowed to. This is crazy. So now, the day of the game. Even though I knew last night something might be brewing, I knew it. Something might be brewing. And I, and I was hoping and praying that we did have a city championship game. Was hoping and praying. Hold on, hold on for a sec. Yep. Hey, what's up? Hello? <laughs> Yo, bro. Yo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you. Trust me. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> I, I'm on live right now. We're on live right now. All right. It's crazy. Got coaches caught. Like, got people mad at us. Yo, coach, don't be mad. Please don't be mad because situations was out of our control. And hopefully they'll be rectified by Sunday, if you know what I mean. And I'll call you after the show. That's a whole nother set of uh, problems right there. But anyway, we didn't get the championship today. And at the last minute, South Shore was ruled uh, that they would be disqualified. Um, nope. And this is where we at, right? Yep. This is where we at right now. It's, it's been a lot to soak up. It's been a lot to even, you know, swallow, man, because it's, it's such a bad thing. And, and the girl suffered because of this. The girl suffered because of this. Salute to South Shore for winning another championship. Big ups to coach. It... it People, y'all have no idea. This is this is so deep, and there's things that I want to say on here, but I, I'm not going to say because it involves me and other people. And I want to make sure that um, when the time comes, that they do the right thing. Right? Yeah. So now, who do we hold accountable? You know, yeah. Because people want to say, you know, the coaches should have their, their their stuff together. But man, if I right, just say, supposedly Jefferson didn't have their stuff together, right? Just say, suppose they didn't have their stuff together, and then you let Eagle Bronx and Stevenson play. You felt they had their stuff together. They play a game, Eagle Bronx wins, and it's like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all ain't got your stuff together either. 
Exactly. That's my my biggest problem is not that people not that people um how can I say this are blaming the PSAL, right? Just like, oh, it's day four, it's day four, it's day four. My biggest thing is that they keep waiting to the last minute to figure this out. Yeah. Now, explain what you were saying early on about what you heard about their process of finding out whether someone's ineligible or not. Yeah, and I was I was thinking, like, as you were saying, I think you're more upset with how the PSAL is kind of handled all these situations, not really their rulings and things like that. No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. I think their rules are their rules. I think if yeah. someone's not being compliant mm -hmm. with the rules, they should have to deal with the consequences. Yeah. So, and, you know, to, to, to answer your question, basically kind of what I was kind of digging into is, you know, who, who's who's deciding who's eligible for these kids? You know, is it the league? Is it the coaches and blah, blah, blah. And as I was digging into it, the things that I kind of realized were no one is really checking from the league that these teams are eligible at all. Now, they may do a certain check throughout the year one time, but they're only really doing something if someone complains about it. So I think a lot of a lot of coaches maybe don't take it as seriously as they as they should, or maybe they're trying to do certain things. But you have to eliminate that problem before the season starts. You have to have almost like Mr. Higgins, a kind of like, you know, whatever position, like a czar of something, your team, that is a way to contact the PSAL. And if they have a problem, too, right? Like say you're the czar of Lincoln. And, and you you think that there's a problem with Lincoln's roster. I'm the PSAL. I don't call the head coach. I don't worry the players. I just call you and say, hey, can you provide us information about player X? And I want to know how old he is. I want to see his transcript all before the season starts. If we can do a process like that where the kids are getting checked and then before the playoffs, you check grades, attendance, because that's what it's all about, right? I don't care that I'm I'm not trying to catch a coach. I'm trying to make sure all these kids are eligible if a coach wants them, you know, for college for the next level. So that's how I see it. So it's not a bad investment, especially a league that has a lot of resources. You know, you could find one coach in the program, right, Pooh? There's so many guys on the bench. You could have one guy be the, the contact for the PSAL. And then from there, there won't be any eligibility issues because they'll be dealt with right there. You know, instead of just being like, oh, well, I guess we're going to trust, you know, public school X that their their roster's clean and we hope nobody complains. And if they do, then we'll face the situation. And I think that's the process right now. And I think that has to change. Um, Jeffrey Montgomery, when I said South Shore won the city championship, I was talking about South Shore girls. Yes, the ladies. They beat uh, East New York Family Academy. My bad if you thought I was talking about the boys. Yeah. All right. Um, yes. So that's one thing, Pooh, that I that I was thinking. You know, I, I don't know. Do you have any ideas of, of how maybe they could rectify this situation, maybe handle it a little better? Well, I'm I'm gonna go back once step back was real quick to say yes, I I I do agree with that when on uh, on Instagram, uh Gangsta Diva said, if you look up any of these kids, if you dig up deep enough to any of these programs, you're going to find something. You're going to find something. You're going to find an infraction somewhere if you go through all these programs. Now, I'm not saying that someone can't be super clean, but if you go dig deep enough, deep enough, most of these schools will have infractions. It depends how hard you're looking. It really depends how hard you're looking. And now, Self police that too, though. At the same time, you know, like if you're proactive about it, you know, you see, you see a kid's missing class. Of course, you could let it go by. Are you helping that kid, Pooh? Am I helping you by letting you cut class all the time? Right. Nah. 
Nah, not at all. But hold on, let's 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 say this too. But suppose yeah. you're a coach that's not in the school. My coach didn't work in the school. But he had eyes and ears everywhere. Come on. Yeah, he had eyes and ears <laughs> everywhere. True, but my school was big. Trust me. Trust me. Lincoln, thirty five hundred students. Yeah. Trust me. It's it's a lot that's, it's a lot going on. That's right. A lot. So wow. and uh Coach Pollard said coaches don't have access to students' personal business. Says uh Gangster Diva said, dig it to any school, you will find it. Um Coach Rwanda said, do auditing before the season and before the playoff. Yes! But I That's said, what we're saying. That's I, what we've been saying the whole time. And right. everyone gets mad at us like we saying something wrong. Like, yeah. it should be ordered and done before the season yeah, and before the playoffs. And I'm talking about the worst team in the league I want audited. Every yes. single team. Not the top four teams. Every single one needs to be audited. Before, this is crazy. Yeah, before and at the postseason. Guess how many teams would be ineligible um, after the first year of doing that? Zero. I mean, come on. Coach Haskins told me that he had a person in position that put in the program that if a kid is ineligible, he doesn't have 90% attendance, if he's too old, whatever the case may be, anything that will come up as a refraction will come up on his computer. You wouldn't have to look at it because it would just pop up. But when they let him go, they let this person go. Yeah. So instead of they, they it would just come up on the computer. And I guess it it kind of they kind of created that once COVID happened when people couldn't go out to the schools. Yeah. And now it's just like, hey, as long as no as long as nobody tells on us, Pooh, we're okay. But what would you do? Like, what would you do? It's more than just class. You right. It's more than just class. Right? You say you have to have the five and one, ninety percent average, a ninety percent attendance rate. And if you don't have a full schedule, you have to pass all of your classes. Yeah. Yeah, it's not easy being an athlete, man. No, no. Basil is is now I get it. No excuse. The head coach should know what's going on with their players. We we're not saying that. We're not saying that's not the, the case. We're not saying that's not the case. Oh, there's no way the coaches are getting off are getting off scot free. Absolutely, e everyone involved, the PSAL, the coaches. I mean, absolutely. There there are multiple people to blame in the situation. Just like Pooh is talking about, who kind of the percentage of blame, you know, is, is kind of what we were focusing on. Uh, Bunny uh, B. Chillin said. Have the school standards be an 80 average to play so if a kid can be set up from the jump, then the coaches need to make sure kids are ready in the NCAA uh, website from ninth grade. This is, you know, updating transcripts. Yeah. Right? Uh, Gangsta Diva, uh, it's too much work, that's why. Oh, it's too much work. Too much work for who? Is it too much work for the coaches? Is it too much work for the Ghana's counselors and, and ADs? Who is it too yeah. much work for? I mean, give me a break. We coach basketball. People coach football with 100 kids on the roster. We can't take care of 11, 12 kids. How much do they audit kids in Long Island? Before the season, a whole roster is sent in. You know what I mean? The... the AD, who's in charge of the sport, make sure that every single player is eligible before they even step on the football field. Like, you can't even practice unless you're ruled eligible. You know what I mean? Coach Green said, first go is hard because, you know, but the playoffs, right, the first round, right, before the season because it's a lot of schools, it's, it's hard, right? But she said during the playoff, it's easier because we have a week off of the seasons. 
Very true. Um, said uh, yeah, I have months preseason to do it. Yeah, you know, months. Say it's too many school. It's too many teams to have an audit. It's two thousand teams. Twenty people in the PSL office. Two thousand teams. Whoa. That's why you put it into a computer. They had that. They had that, but they no. got rid of the guy. I know. You need a system, though. You need a like a you need a uh, a thing that is gonna mark up a red flag anytime it happens. That's what way. That's the way that you can monitor it throughout the whole time. You know. <laughs> My god, Mama Boy Puff said Coach can, can tell for practice who was fell in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> I needed that puff. That that was funny. That was funny. Oh man, puff, puff! I used to walk in and I used to say progress report. You see four kids ducking in the locker room faster than you could imagine. Kidding me? You know right away. No right away. He was messing around. <laughs> Said let individual schools manage their athletics. PSL to the uh to audit. Um, hold on. Who said this? It says PSL is a full-time job. Coaches AD is part-time jobs. Do the math. Whoa. Whoa. Is 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 the AD a full-time job in Long Island, Brian? Yeah. It better be. They make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'm pretty sure, you know, they're they're in the schools all day. At least at the school I was at, RAD was in the office every day, all week. And he was leading the bagpipe team. Right. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna give give uh, you know, less compensation than what it's due for the amount of effort it puts in, you're gonna get a, a poor product, right, Pooh? Yes. Anyone else hopping on, Pooh? Hold on, hold on. I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Hold up one second. Let me hit this. So, let's just go through a few of these comments real quick because, you know, um, it says basketball programs that have success with academics should have PDs for coaches and administration. This is to spread knowledge. PD is professional <laughs> development. Love it, Hoop. John, tap in. Send me, send me an email, John. Tap in. Tap in because exactly. this, this, yo, Jay, Hoop Dreams, send your, send your, uh, your email. I think I should have it. I need you to tap in. All right. So we get to everybody's perspective. Everybody's perspective. We want people to come on up. Says, listen, they were just on these kids, and these kids, the majority are in the public school system. All right, we're not gonna go over that. <laughs> we're not doing that. We're not doing. We're not disrespecting kids. That's one thing we're not gonna do. Monty is fired up. Yeah, we're not gonna disrespect any kids. At the end of the day, yeah, y'all wouldn't want to know how I, I really feel about this situation. Like I can really, y'all have no idea. I've been an educator for a long time. Yeah. And trust me, if y'all only knew, if y'all only knew, I just keep it to myself. Listen, let's think about this. Cars have changed, phones have changed, education has yet to change. We haven't adapted to the times, right? And what we have to do to make sure that we adapt to the times is make sure that we we're keeping the interest of the kid, right? We have to keep the interest of the child. Now, if this child needs extra help, 
this child, you know, I know some schools, they do Saturday schools, they do after school programs, they do everything, study hall, they do everything to keep these kids eligible, everything in their power. So I know what these basketball programs do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that we don't have any bad apples. Yeah, there's some bad apples. Say in Long Island, the AD makes 150 a year. Hello. Yep. That's a great incentive to keep kids to keep kids uh eligible. That's a great incentive right there. I didn't know that. Yep. And guess what? Before for you to even try out, you got to be eligible, my man. You have to fill you have to have a certain GPA, certain amount of, you know, percentage attended to even try out. I mean, come on. It's 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 filtered that easily. You can't cheat if every kid who's ineligible can't even try out for your team. Coach LaWanda Green said, listen, we had this issue in my third year in 2011. I didn't know, and someone told because it was a school we played and the athlete was in a school in our building. And then next we played a developmental only two games. Oh, there was, there was in a developmental league. I remember that. Yeah, East New York takes one or two days to audit a school, and it's only 182 days a year. Whoa. It takes one or two days to audit a school, and it's only 182 days in a year. So just imagine doing over 200 schools. Yeah. This I mean, is crazy. You got to have multiple people doing it. Said so the coaches should be on top of this. Set your student athletes up for success. It's as simple, and parents need to be on top of it as well. I agree, but coaches are always going to push the limits, Pooh. You know that. Coaches are always going to push the boundaries, push the limits. They're always going to try and find an edge, even with the best intentions. Almost every coach is going to try and do that. So as much as they should be in charge of it, they have to be checked. They just do. Coach Green is on fire. She's a New York City legend. She she played in the PSCL, and now she coaches in the PSCL, mm -hmm. right? She said, first line is coach and AD. We know uh, who has coaches. We get access to everything. We have to do our job first. We can't let it fly to win games. Coach Lawrence Pollard said, remember, as a coach, uh, your 100 to 200, uh, you have to monitor as well. We're teachers first, and it's easy. Right? Brooklyn Lawn Tech says, my suggestion is to do this di diligently. There has to be a computer program that can do this. I'm telling you, do I have to get coach on the phone? I think I have to get coach on the phone because, you know, <laughs> People are going to think I'm lying when I say this. Uh, you're not. You're not. You're not. They Coach Paula says, sorry, you have to monitor your day students. We also have to service them also. Right. Gangsta Diva, absolutely. Not we're going to keep this professional. <laughs> Listen, this this is uh, my guy Tasha Ross. The education is to provide uh, as, as per, what's that? It's bringing to learning for students who get them all access they need. They will live longer and work longer than they will compete on the field. That's very true. Hold on for one second, because I think this is this is an emergency call I'm putting out right now. This is an emergency call that I'm putting out right now. John, you want to come on? Let me know. I would love to hear your perspective, brother. We was... <laughs> He's going to call me back. Trust me. I've heard this today. I've heard this today. That... 
there was a man who worked in the PSL office who had a program. And I believe a program is easier to kind of pick up, right? If something flies under the radar, the computer is right there to pick it up. But you got to make sure everybody's in the computer and everybody's grades are in at the correct time. Right? Yeah. It says, uh, Brian, you're right. For trials, you need to be above grade point average. Yeah. Said, but the PSL don't pay that much. We talking about they talking about the uh the A D jobs. Right? Yeah. We called this emergency show tonight because our phones, our DMs is all blowing up and people want answers. We also wanted to give people a chance to express themselves so they can let out that energy, right? Yeah. And there's a lot of tension in the city, you know, like like we were talking about. People catching strays, people just putting out simple tweets and get, getting uh, getting ambushed. So a lot of, lot of emotion, a lot of feelings in the city. So that, that's why we did this. So, you know, people could express themselves like Pooh said and, and tell us how they feel because – you know, we've been going through it all week with these guys. I mean, every day it's something new. NYC Prospect says compliant officers are needed. If there's uh, over 2,000 athletes in a city and there's only 20 people working in the PSTL, you should hire some compliance officers, people that's going to go out, right, go out and, and make sure that these schools are or these kids are eligible to play. You got to yeah. hire more people. You, Give them you a can't bunch cover – you can't cover the whole city with 20 people. No. Or whatever. Uh, just say it's more than 20 people, all right? You yeah. got 30 people. Like, I wish I, I knew the exact number. Mm -hmm. But from what I'm hearing, it's 20, right? So you're going to need more compliance officers. I do agree that that should be done, for sure. It should be hired. It said professional development is essential, coaches and ADs, et cetera. He said, I want to take on the AD job. Oh, yes, you will. And you will find everything. Trust me. <laughs> no one would get past you for sure. <laughs> for sure. Listen, this this, this is, and you're right. You're right, uh, Randy. It is bigger than uh, being uh, um, el eligibility. You're right. And attendance. It is bigger than that. It is bigger than that. Because as a whole, we were let down today. We was let down a couple of times. And I think, again, I'm going to restate this. If this was done in the beginning of the year and the playoffs, like Coach uh, Green said, we wouldn't have this problem. We wouldn't know exactly who our champion is, right? No Even though we, we know who it is. But sure. Coach Hamilton didn't want it like this. No. I'm going to say this again. Coach Hamilton didn't want to take this win like this. He wanted his kids to play because it takes away from their joy of being real City champions. You don't want that asterisk by back the name. Back. They wanted to go real back to back. Facts. Yeah, compliance officers 100% agree with NYC prospects. I mean, it's just little details, like you said, taking care of it before the season, like we've been talking about it. These little details allow the coaches a lot more freedom, everyone to feel confident. No one's allowed to snitch, especially these adults at the last freaking second. And these people that hold on to these cards and actually know about these kids, I hope they feel like absolute crap that they let down the city and that they let down all these kids that have worked their entire lives for this moment. Because I hope that little satisfaction you feel that, that the team had to forfeit makes you feel strong because it's pretty low and pretty ridiculous and shameful. So... Just had to get that out there, man. Look, again, it says, so how many kids failing on the program? We're punishing all the kids, right? Even if, and I say this too. All right, suppose this one player supposedly that was on South Shore that's not in compliance. Take what happened to the other kids? Exactly. Why can't a player be ineligible? Right? Just yeah. Can't play. 
you know? Like, we're not the NCAA. Like, we don't have to rip down a banner because Chris Webber took a little money. Right, Pooh? Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. Facts. Facts. This is high school basketball. Let him play the game, and then if after you have a problem, then you have a problem. Fine. You know? Mm-mm-mm. It says, like, they have uh, borough family centers, have borough compliance centers for each borough. That's it. NYC Prospect, you're on point. Yeah. A database, for, of course, is the key. City has money. This is crazy. Bring back progress reports and Delaney cards. It's a lot. It's a lot. Like, we're asking, we're asking, we're asking a lot of coaches and ADs, right? If we're going to ask a lot of coaches the ADs, we have to ask a lot of the PSAL, right? We're going to have them make sure that they're doing their due diligence beforehand. Yeah. Not the night before. Not the night before, not the day of. Like, at that point, you got to say, okay, we messed up. We missed it. Take the one kid out who's not eligible and let the other kids play because we messed up on that. Yeah. I don't see it no other way you could do it. And that's like, and and that's a suggestion that should have been made. And I think it would have been a real mature move by the league to to do that because that's what should have been done, Pooh. They should have said, listen, if you're cleared at the start of the playoffs, you're cleared. I don't care who calls and says what. You've been cleared. And if there's any real, you know, I guess, insinuations or, you know, a player involved, he just can't play in the game, like you said. Play the game out because, you know, I mean, the biggest event of the year in the PSAL is the championship, is it not? Yeah. I mean, the best reason to be in the PSAL is to get to this championship, to go to St. John's, right? It's probably talked about at the beginning of every single team season. St. John's. We got to get to St. John's. And to not have that game tonight after the girls uh, just rubs me the wrong way. Just still, I'm still upset about it. NYC Prospect says we are here talking about not being played. Uh, Understand we need to treat this situation as a wake-up call. We can't blame the PSL only. We're not. Hell, I don't know if you how long you've been on the show, fam. We're not just blaming only the PSL. We just said coaches, ADs, everybody need to be held accountable. We're not this is not the poke at the PSL show. No, nah, we talked about the percentage of blame because they are so both at at, at hand, these coaches and um the assistants and people involved in the program and, and even the parents of some of the programs, they're all involved, uh, as well as the PSL, for sure. We're just saying at the last minute. That's all we put the blame on. We 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 <laughs> believe that the, the the PSL should be able to enforce their rules. That's all we're saying. At the last minute, this is happening. That's all we're saying, and it's happening on a consistent basis. That's the only problem that we really are having with the PSL. That is happening at the last minute. Other than that, they it have to be a governing body that make uh people accountable for what they're doing. And it looks so unprofessional, right, Pooh? That's the that's whole. what we're saying. Yeah, that's the laughing stock portion we're talking about. The embarrassment. That's why we're really upset as well. Is it's just a bad look for the league, you know? And it could have been handled. It could have been handled a lot, e- a lot more professionally and and a lot easier. Say, so if I'm a kid with good grades in the PSL, I'm transferring to a Catholic school that cares or a program that cares and makes sure that I'm in a position to succeed. Now, again, you know, I, I have to check that because how do you know these these other programs don't care about their kids? They care enough to keep them playing. They care enough to, to, to put them in a position to win, even though it costs them, right? Now, we can say whatever we want, but I just think that's unfair to put out there and say that these people are not, not caring. Right. Well, 
t- tell everybody about that post that uh my guy Dave had put up and and what happened after that. Oh yeah, you know like. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on for one sec. Hold on for one sec. Hold on for one sec. Coach. Hey Glenn. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Can you can you hear him, Brian? Can you hear him? Yep. All right, Coach. Yeah. Can you explain to everybody the program that was set up when you was uh director? Alan Blank. He was a he, he does the eligibility. He does the eligibility and he goes over every every player on every, in every sport. He starts around the middle of July. So he starts with the soccer and the football. Because you know they, they they start before school with, with their eligibility. Now Danny Harris took him off the eligibility com- committee, stopped him from doing that job. He didn't want to hire him back, but he's kind of like connected. But Danny didn't hire him back until November, which was way too late. So oh, oh, he's, he's still part of the PSL then? Yeah. Oh, okay. Back, but when he hired him back, he didn't hire him back for that position. He let the, the, the guy that he bought from Edison do what he do what, what Allen did. And the guy from Edison had no clue. Now was there a program coach? Was there a program that he created? Yeah, yeah. Allen on his computer, yeah. With, did with they the still kick back it? to him. But Danny 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 wouldn't lean on him. He didn't ask him no questions. No nothing. He just felt as though that he was a guy that was obsolete. And this guy, he been working with the city of New York over sixty years. All right, that that's that's what we wanted to kind of get out, coach. Far as there was a program, because people was asking why there wasn't a program that was developed. And, and, and Al, Alan Blank is his name. Okay. All right. All right. Because I don't want to say too much of the people's names on here. Yeah. Because. But, but, but what Danny? But Danny. He just wanted. <laughs> oh, coach. Got you. Got you. Importance of an Allen Blank. Okay. All right. All right. You know, he, he didn't even understand my importance. <laughs> All right, coach. I don't. I don't want to stretch this. Out. I just want to get that part off because I'm. I'm. We're doing this in real time right now. Okay, coach. Thank you, coach. Okay. Yeah, I'm on. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, that's all I wanted to get straight, that there was a program. Now, I don't know if they still have a program, but if you have to go out. But, Pooh, it's yes. just one guy could handle it. Am I right through the program? No, no. And and you're right, 60 years. Like, I don't, I'm not going to say he was out of touch or he's in touch. We just talking about the program. I'm not here to talk, to, again, to, to knock uh, – Danny Harris for him not having them or his importance, whatever. That's his job to play. hire whoever he thinks should be in that position. But the key thing I wanted to kind of get off, now I want to make sure that I was right, that there was a program that was developed to pick up people that was ineligible. That yeah. was the whole point. Correct. And I didn't want Coach to go too much off of a tangent and let him know that we was on live. So it's, it's not um, – Disrespectful yeah. to anyone else, and it sounds like there might be they might be doing a different process. So, you know, that may be something that need to be you know looked into for sure. Um, and I knew there was a program. You know, coach talked about it. Um, but yeah, what you asked me before about Dave's joint, you know, just just posted one of the statements about real tough day for NYC, uh, but also you know threw a little thing that you know guys got to follow the rules and be held accountable. And I got to tell you, the Catholic schools uh, were not happy with that, Pope. Uh, they kind of jumped down Dave's joints throat a little bit. And, you know, I know Dave. I know what Dave was trying to do ultimately. But um, to see the Catholic schools get that upset, I mean, that's what we talked about, right? The image of that deal of them being together and us benefiting, you know, each league benefiting off each other. And just to see that tension right away from one tweet. You know, and, and, and I and I actually loved what all the coaches wrote. We're following every damn rule we can. 
you know, um, you know, those coaches in the Catholic League. So, um, Ron Clario said, I was at St. John's tonight and spoke to someone with ties to the DOE and the PSL, and that person said, Nothing is going to happen. Wow. Well, whatever the case may be, you know, I, I agree with uh, Gangsta Diva. She said it's adult egos. And I, I explained the other night about the power of the ego, right? Yeah. The power of the ego. Some people let their egos take them over. And you can't let the ego get the best of you. You can't. You can't let your ego get the best of you. This is why we don't mind spreading love. This is why we on here right now. It's not our egos that that made us want to do this. That we were disappointed for the kids. I'm not playing tonight. I got off early tonight. I I could be chilling, you know. Trust me, probably still gonna chill tonight because it's the weekend. But still, <laughs> I don't have to be on here. Brian yeah. could be doing something else. This is the weekend, baby, but we know kids are going to be hurt by this. There's going to be a lot of mental stress, a lot of mental anguish that's going to be going on with kids tonight, and they're going to be frustrated that they didn't get a chance to play in the biggest games of their career. And may, some of them may never get back here, ever. Some ever. Of them are done. Some of them are done playing basketball for the rest of their lives. If you are a basketball player and you play basketball in the PSL or the Captain School League and you never won a championship, put some fire emojis up. Put Let people know. This ain't easy to get to. Put some thumbs up, fire emojis. It's not easy. No. You may never not, get here again. Yeah, some guys never get the opportunity again. That's why when you're there, you got to capitalize, man. What I would always tell my guys, you know, we got you there and it's your job to finish. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. We're trying. My God, Darnell Williams in here, right? It, yeah, you baby. may never win a city championship, right? Anybody else, put some fire emoji, the thumbs up. It's not to blow you up. But if you play New York City basketball, wow, this, this chat is going crazy. And I was so behind. There's so much going on. Sorry, my people that saw Instagram. K dot, put the fire emojis up. If you never won a city championship before, let's let's let the people know how hard it is. It's not easy. It's hard, man. Silk the cuz. Let's go. Put the fire emojis. The thumbs up. There you go. Skeet the boy. That's right. You never won a city championship. Coach Coop. That's right. Silk smooth criminal. That's right. Put the fire emojis up. This is not easy to get to. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah. Just imagine, Pooh. Just go back each year. DJ Dom DeMarco's in the building. Fire emojis up in the air. If you never won a city championship, this is real. Yeah. And just imagine going back every year and taking away that championship game. You know, taking away Eddie Moniak's moment last year. Right? We can't do that. That's city history last year. Yes. Right? He said, Pooh got the church going. That's great. Hey, listen, put them up. Put them up. <laughs> if you never won, there you go. Hoop Dreams NYC. If you never won a city championship, put those fire emojis up. Let's get this going. This is real talk. True. Will Kennedy, let's go. Let's go. Right. My God, Tooth. That's right. Put them up. Yeah, put them up. Dying for that opportunity, right? All these And guys Porter. Are. That's right. JR Sports, Omar Williams, giving everybody shout outs. Love Joey the Mayor. Keep them coming. It is not easy. It is not easy. It's not easy. People think this is easy to get. It's not easy. No. You may get there and never get back again or never go at all. Right? My guy, Mark Petit, appreciate you. We push it. Play that u trick and play that Hofstra. Never won a city championship. He was all city. Joey the mayor, never won. That's right. And this is no disrespect, 
But we want to let the kids know how hard and let everybody know out there it's, it's hard. It ain't easy. Yeah. It's wild. This is crazy. Stepping that basketball is in the building. Appreciate you, Coach, for stopping through. We talking real things tonight. New York City basketball. We have to stop pointing fingers. Let's stop pointing fingers. We need to come together. Yeah, I, I can't help it. I can't help it. I, I'm I, if y'all turn your TVs down if I'm too loud. Hell no, no way. Turn your TVs enough. down if I'm too loud. You're not loud enough, boo. Let's go. This is this is what we about here. We passionate about this. Exactly, it means something to us. You may never, ever, ever get this opportunity. Kids may never, ever get this opportunity again. And this is real. Oh, <laughs> listen, listen. People who ask me what, what I've done, right? Hold on, hold on. Hello? You got to let Gangsta Diva speak, Pooh. I I'm 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 on Stop skipping. I, Get to the point. Pull the band-aid off like a big boy and let her speak. She ain't no she ain't come up here. She, I'm letting her, I'm I'm reading all her comments. She, she said she want to join and speak and keep it clean. But we are not going to pull nothing. We are not calling unless we don't have no receipts. You got to let Gangsta Diva speak. Give her 2 minutes of the platform. She I'm a, I'm a, I'm a send an email. That's what's up. Let's go. Oh. That's what's up, baby. Let's go. <laughs> you better oh. keep <laughs> this, this is, this is, this is, listen, we're doing this in real time. We're doing this in real time. And I'm going to respect the ladies because we always, you know, have guys up here. We got to bring the ladies up. You got to do the right thing. So. Coach, hope you're ready for this. I'm ready for a world win. Let's go. <laughs> oh, this is this is going to be good. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. All right. Okay. It's about to be on and cracking. <laughs> All right, now. Let's see it, Troublemaker. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. You are loving this. You are loving this. You are loving this. Look at that. All right. We said we was going to open it up. Well, we're going to do it. All right. Just watching. Thank, thanks, John. I, I was hoping I wouldn't have to say it again. Yes, we beat Manhattan Center at St. John's. Got my guy, John Arnold, point guard. <laughs> we stopped him from winning the city championship. And luckily for uh, Lincoln, we, we kept winning more and more and more and more and more and more. Wow. But only won one. Only won one. Look, I, I lost in, in prep school. We lost in the championship in prep school. Yeah. And I lost every conference championship since since I was at FDU. I know. I check. I checked the records. Right. I, I, I can't. That was my only championship. That damn St. Francis team, baby. <laughs> and 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 Robert Morris. We yep. lost to Robert yep. Morris as well. Yep. So, Diva, the email is sent. On you, baby. Oh, you by just, the way, Boo. Go I ahead. Got a side thing also. I was I was looking through the Twitter, and you know, we want to show love to the guys. We we're talking about uh, Jakai Sanders. Also, want to show love to my guy Adam Enjai, um, you know, senior who's done at Cardinal Hayes, but um, has been seen visiting a lot of local schools, Iona, Hofstra. So his recruitment's starting to pick up. So just want to shout out my guy Adam. I'll give him some love. Know that he's been grinding 
on that recruitment trail trying to lock in a school. No like doubt. I salute, salute, Adam and then Jai. Facts. It says, I coached in the uh, Captain School League and we lost in the Final Four, the closest I got to a championship game. I'm telling you, man, it is not easy. Right? It is not easy. Think it's that, so yeah, much Matt had upset Oak Hill at soon. Right? Yeah, that, that's saying true. They beat Oak Hill, but couldn't beat Lincoln with five unknown guys, right? I don't think nobody could name our starting five. And the only person y'all probably could name is me and Tiny because I talk about me and Tiny. <laughs> And I mentioned other guys too, but y'all probably forgot their names. All right, that's right. Women got rights too. That's right. That's right, Keisha. Women got rights too. Give a woman a voice. Let Gangsta B speak. You got to come on. You got to click on that link. I sent it to your email. You got, you're not going to appear on Instagram. You're not going to appear on Instagram. You're going to appear on YouTube. Yeah. I just sent the link. Check your email. Come on the board. We'd love check to have spam. you. Check the spam. <laughs> oh, yeah. If it's not in your email box, check the spam. Check the spam. Eric <laughs> Kennedy said Bernard Mitchell. And I went to say Dow Flickers. No, Bernard Mitchell. Dow Flickers came after us. Rest in peace, Dow Flickers. But you named Bernard Mitchell, who is our leading scorer. And it's a crying shame about his career. But yeah. in high school, he killed everybody. Bernard Mitchell was our leading scorer. Bernard Mitchell is one of the greatest players I ever played with. I done played with them all. I played with future Malloy Naismith. I played with Boo Harvey. I played with Ross Strickland. I played with Derek Chivas. I played with Kenny Anderson, Bernard Mitchell, definitely. You ever play he with said, uh, some 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 team from Brooklyn beat us in the New York City Chip at St. John's? You a sucker, John? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my brother right there, brother for life right there. Go ahead, you know what I'm saying? Who, some you coach? ever play with uh, Kenny Smith? He was older than me. Yeah. Little yeah, older than he was a little bit older than me. All those guys, I didn't even know about those guys until I got into high school. Yeah. Salute yeah. to my guy, DJ Kenny Parker. DJ Kenny Parker, if y'all know, he's a legendary hip-hop DJ and the brother of KRS-One. He was he played for Lincoln. He was my OG. He was the one that was schooling me. Hold on for a sec. Hello. Yeah, did, did, did you, did you? Or you just want to speak on the phone? I, I, I don't know. It's not. It's not allowing me to do it. I don't know how to do that. Just click if you if all right. You just want to speak on the phone. What you want to do? Nah, it, it doesn't matter. How, how can I get on? I, I'm, I'm gonna speak my piece and keep it real professional. All right, click. How do I get on? You just gotta click on the link. It should bring you right to the room. And a studio. All right, let me try. Let me try. Hang on. All right. One day Basil get... said, I remember the St. Francis PA Conference game. My man Brad McClain was on that squad. Yes. And they had a guy named Joe Anderson and Mike Isolino, who was drafted by the <laughs> Utah Jazz. Mikey. Mike Isolino was a pro. He was oh, he was oh. shooting from Steph Curry range. We had no real answer for them. That place was jumping. That place was packed. ESPN cameras all in our face. Man, what a time. What a time. And we had a great record that year, too. We wound up playing in the NIT, which y'all see behind me. Still got the NIT ball. And my freshman year, we made it to the NCAAs, but then I was declared ineligible, Prop 48, right, with some BS rule, right? So that's enough about me. I'm not going to go on. But my only chip was with Lincoln. That's all I got to say. That is the point that I'm making. The only chip <laughs> was from Lincoln. That's it. And I remember it to this day. And, and that gives me enough bragging rights when i on the platform and I say, you know what? I'm a city champion. When they had me in the news that time and was promoting the, uh, the podcast, it was like, you know, City champion, Glenn Poole Harding. I was like, right. word. <laughs> 40 years later, baby, it's still popping. 
Now, are you are you more proud? I'll ask you a question. Ready? Are you more proud of that city championship or the fact that you played D one basketball? My city championship. I brag more about my city championship than than talking about I played D one basketball. I'm answering the phones tonight, y'all. So y'all could. This is all in real time because my guy Ricky Rivers, coach. What up? I'm on the air. Oh, now what's up, Paul? I just wanted to call you just to see how you hold it up because I figured you would be hitting the ground running with this stuff and, and staying on it because all week I watched you on the post of it. So I'm just driving home. I said, let me call my man, Paul. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm fine. Look, look, right? Coach Ricky Rivers, he's he's calling the check on me. That's it, right? This is what we got to do. This is what New York loves sound like right here, right? Yep. Y'all know. You know the assistant coach for Canarsie, the founder of Fun Sport, one of the most legendary tournaments in New York City history. Hey, Paul, I didn't know that you was on the air, bro. I just said, let me just call you because I know that you've been <laughs> on this topic all week, and today was just another. You, you, I got you on speaker just in case. I, 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 just in case you let you know, and everybody's hearing what you're saying, just to let you know. I, I just felt like you was been on the post of it. Just today has been like another thing. I would say that we, that we dealing with and we working through, man. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I was just in the, in the call of some music. I said, let me just call you pool and just see what you up to and how you were holding up through it. Didn't know that you were live, champ, and everybody can hear my voice. But I hope that, uh, I hope that there's some calm at the end of this joint. It just doesn't seem like it's getting any calmer. But I hope that there's some calm because I think there's some young people live that's being disrupted right now through some of the decisions. And though people are trying to get it right, even the people who are making decisions, they're trying to get it right for the for, for everyone, but it's not going right. You know what I'm saying? So with they, you know, it's, this may sound kind of crazy. People don't really understand my perspective on this, but I, I also believe coaches who are being accused of things need an opportunity to prove themselves, but... Even if the fact, I think that the people that's involved in it, I know these people personally, they all work on the half for half of kids year round, not just for the PSAL season. They work for kids year round. I watch these guys in the summertime moving kids around. I watch kids get the power through these kids. And I'm not saying that these guys are always doing things incorrectly. Let's use that term, incorrectly. Good people. These are good guys, man. You know what I mean? These are good guys that's been trying and has been working for for kids. Uh, and I know there are some guys that's not being discussed all around the city and all around the country that may do things incorrectly on behalf of kids. Because the last thing you want to do is close the door on a kid. That's hard as a coach when you close your door on a kid and say, "No, you can't go. No, you can't." Not to dribble the ball no more because you don't know what you're pushing that kid into. It's hard to do that. People who are not involved make it sound easy. That, yeah, you can just tell that kid he can't play no more. He ain't do this academics. He ain't do this. You're supposed to, as a coach, you're supposed to say, I'm coaching now. I could have probably said that from the sidelines looking in, but it's hard to do that when you care about a kid. It's hard to turn your back when you don't know what that kid's going to do when you close the door or how the streets is going to handle him. When you close the door, sometimes the same spot for that kid is with you. I'm on the bench with you. I know sometimes you got to teach the lesson. When the coaches, we've done that, and I do that, and you got to pull a kid, but it's hard. It's hard, man. Those decisions are not easy. Some people have the privilege of erasing the, the evidence. Some people you can't find, you can't trace their evidence because they do a good job. They got all kinds of resources to so it. You can't trace. And boo, you played major. You played Division One college basketball too, and I did. The thing gets even more complicated as you go up. Facts. It, 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 it gets more complicated then. But we're not. We're not talking. This, this, this is not just at high school. It, it's just, you know what I mean. And I'm not. Man, I'm. Not, and I'm trying to be careful with my words because I'm not trying to say that these guys didn't. If if they would did something inappropriate, shouldn't have to have some consequences. But I think you got to think it all the way through. When I do these consequences and I administer this, what's the impact of it? And it's the impact 
you know, worth this, this me doing this right now. Because sometimes you got to be like, yo, you know what? I got it. I see it. You're trying to set up a bomb at the 11th hour. I'm going to detonate that, and we're going to deal with this later. But when you do this much, this much, so much, right behind each other, like, what do we, what, what happens from here? Like, what? that's what I like to know, What like, what happens from here. I ain't expect to be on this job, but I like to know, if you know the answers, that's one of the, what happens now. What's the result? What's the end game? What happens? Do, do Eagle Academy become the champion? Oh, oh, my bad. I, I was, I was just letting you speak because we got somebody. I got, I got to get gangs to be up here real soon. Um, but look, it's, it's right now. I guess they, they are the champions, considering the fact that the, the, the team that they were supposed to play is disqualified. But they don't want that. They want to play. I wish I was running the rucker. I mean, or or Gaucho Jim. I would tell him to come in as, you know, Kevin Hamilton's and, and Coach Mark's team and not represent the school and sell out the gym and let these kids play and just for the hell of it. But, you know, we don't have that power to do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's not the same because there's other things at stake, right? Isn't it a Catholic versus public champion at the event that's supposed to happen? Yeah. And then whoever, whoever wins that is supposed to go to the throne event. That's supposed to happen in Jersey. That's supposed to happen to race against all the other state champions. So there's some domino effects to these divisions, too. I hope that at some point, you know I mean, you sit down and you discuss strategy behind this, and there's some real strategy into, into some of these decisions because uh, it's like I, I've just worked in, in corporate settings to where you, you just you got to have some strategy behind the decisions that you make. I don't know what the strategy is. I know what the reaction was, and I know that somebody did something because I don't have the actual fact. I know what people say. One person ineligible, five person ineligible, age. I know we've been, we've seen it this season. We heard about it last season with the other team that won the championship. We heard about it with another school. I, I, man, I'm 50 something years old. I've been hearing about this since I played ball when I was a kid. Now, People doing things inappropriate and people doing things to get kids in. Man, it ain't this ain't nothing new. So how are you gonna figure out how do you go and fight a systemic problem with it? What's the strategy to fight to fight this problem? Are you saying that the new this regime is gonna stop feeding? When they hire like mad police officers to stop crime, I don't think nobody stopped crime yet. So I'm I'm curious to find out how this thing gets fixed, then. Well, listen, brother, I appreciate you, man. If, if you know, if you have any more words, you want to come on, send your email, because I want to try to give uh, Gangsta B some time to, so she can give her, her, let her voice be heard. But we appreciate you, Coach. Yo, yo, Rick, let me tell you, man, you, you do so much for our city, man. You do so much for our kids, especially the younger kids, those kids in junior high school that need a look, those kids that need uh, exposure. Um, you've done a lot to help us over here. Uh, with our tournament and with our kids, man. So I'm going to say, man, keep doing what you're doing. Keep fighting a good fight. And, man, keep – stay ten toes down, brother, because that's – you are a real one. Appreciate you. Thank you, Coach. Keep trying to keep New York City together. We need to stay united, man. Definitely. we got to stay united. Definitely. Definitely. All right, Sam. Y'all have a – y'all, you and everybody else have a good evening. All right. Thank you. Coach Ricky Rivers, y'all. Coach Ricky points. Rivers. A lot of good points, Pooh. Yep. Hold on. Hold on. I think she's been trying to get on, but we just going to call her because you can hear her. You can hear them real good, right? Everybody, you can hear. Hello? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get that thing. All right. So got, we can we can go right here. Yeah. So um, first I wanted to touch on that AD situation. So the, it, it's the, the athletic director, like y'all said, get paid a lot of money. So let's. I'm, I'm just gonna go on on facts and let's go. Let's start with Thomas Jefferson. We have an AD that does not work at Thomas Jefferson. Okay, she works at South Shore. She's a she is a um she's a t 
teacher, she's a gym teacher, and most of her students are South Shore basketball players. So I feel like that was already a conflict because it could be any other school but South Shore. So that was already a conflict. So the athletic job, athletic director job is the one that's supposed to input this information. So if we had an ineligible player, she's supposed to bring that to the attention of the coach. The coach got his job to do. It's not the coach's job. It's not the coach's job to follow behind each player they grade. She has to input that information into the computer. So she has to know what she's inputting. Are you following me, Pooh? Yes, I'm following you. Okay. So that right there was is, is a red flag. And, again, a, a, a lot of people had issues with this woman. And I, I defended her. I defended this woman because I guess she grew up grew a little attached to me or whatever, but she was the first problem. Then, after that, you, you, gotta, you gotta hold her accountable. She has to be accountable first. And no, she's no longer at Jeff. Okay, she stepped down. She has to step down. The parents made her step down. Like, no, you cannot you cannot work here. And who, 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 who is your allegiance to? Is your allegiance to Jeff players or South Shore players? You and South Shore players all day. You know what I'm saying? That, that's your school. That's where you work. You only come to Jeff to be the athletic director. That's a problem. Okay? Well, how, how many how many hours how many hours do you think they they're allowed to work as an AD? Do you know? Do you know that? I, I don't know. I, mean, I I never worked for DOE, so I I, I can't answer that question. Okay. Is it, 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 their job? Um, I mean, she she she's in charge of a lot of a lot of um athletic programs. It's not just basketball she's in charge of, but this is basketball season. So just like when it's football season, she got to make sure she's diligent in what she does when she's dealing with football. But this is basketball season, and you know that we are one of the top schools. So you got to be diligent in what you do. So let's go back. Our, our players that was, was, was supposedly not ineligible, this is, this is not current. This is something that's old. So now we went to play South Shore, right? We beat South Shore. Now, we never beat South Shore. This would have never been a problem. When we beat South Shore, all of a sudden, they did up some shit that's old. I, I, I don't, okay, okay, all right. I don't, I don't want to get into, because it, it, that's just going to cause more separation, right? I, I no, just, it's not, but, but, no, but my school, we got to talk about the facts. I know, you know, I, know facts, I know, I, I know, I know. But do we? But do? But do we? Do you? Do you have substantial evidence that someone from South Shore told? Like we just can't go on hearsay or what we think, right? And I think if if we do that, what happens is you give people in the audience a chance to start speculating themselves and start to point well, fingers. That, well, well, that's that's true. But there's some things. So I'm, I, you already know we we we're top notch in what we do. Okay, I'm a retired I'm a retired investigator. So. It's no, we we're not gonna play these games. So I'm not gonna sit here and I'm not gonna blow up nobody names. I didn't say no names. We're talking about a position. At the end of the day, it's not the coach's job. The athletic directors. This is what y'all was talking about. I wanted to I wanted to reiterate what you what your program was saying. What everybody was saying that these athletic directors get paid a lot of money, and it's their job to be diligent in what they do. So it ain't it, it, it's not Coach Bud's job. It's not his job to, 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 to coach kids and be on top of their grades. Do he do it? Yes, he do it. But the, what, what got past him, what got past him, and he, and, and he beat himself up for it too because he felt it shouldn't have got past him. But at the end of the day, us as the parents, we're going to step up and say, no, whose job is what? Everybody got to be responsible for their job. Am I correct? Correct. Am I correct? Correct. Everybody has to be responsible for their job. So at the end of the day, we you, you put us back in a tournament, you put us back in a tournament, and then the same thing happened. And then the same thing is happening. You pulled us back out in the 11th hour, the day before, the, not even the day, the night before, okay? The night before we play over the same thing. And then it's, a, it, and it's all infractions. They not even knew. We are eligible to play. Now, according to... Listen, I, I'm a person that abide by the rules, okay? When you're, when you you, you got to follow the rules, but you got to fight people by their own rules. And we fought them by the rules. And it's the last thing that I'm really going to say, okay? Jefferson had a Jefferson had an appeal. Our appeal was at 5 o'clock in the evening, okay? 5 o'clock in the evening in the city. How is it that PSAL already updates the whole website at 9 o'clock in the morning? So therefore, you you making you 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 doing an appeal for what reason? That means it, it, to me the whole appeal was biased because you already 
knew you already had your decision on what you was going to say, or your, your decision on what you was going to give us because you already made up your mind. But you know why the pill was made? Because big people was called in the middle. Yeah, the mayor's office, a lot of people was called in because it, 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 everybody got to protect their kids and we're going to protect ours. So you ain't, ain't no coaches, nobody snitch. The parents did their job, okay? And we some bad parents. I'm going to leave it like that. We some bad parents. <laughs> No, I get it. I get you. I get you. I get you. But the, 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 the people need to know that what's going on. The people need to know the real deal. And the real deal, you got you to gotta go to the core. And you got to get to PSAL. PSAL is the problem. Because when things was brought to your attention, you need to investigate. They knew about this. The, 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 the main thing that they claiming that they disqualified South Shore for, they knew for days. They knew for days. So why did you wait to the la- to the day of the to the day of this championship game to disqualify them? You know the boys shouldn't have been playing because we brought that to your attention. Okay, so why do you wait? I mean, we know why it, it, it came down to the last minute because you got to answer to everybody. Got to answer to somebody, and nobody's bigger. Everybody want to play 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 big and with these egos. Stop with these egos, because all y'all doing is hurting these kids. Man on man, one man don't like another man. One, Like, come on, stop it already. Just stop it. And at the end of the day, sir, some people shouldn't even be coaching. You may you, you may be good at coaching, but your, your objective is not for the kids. Your objective is just for, so you can have a win underneath your belt. And, and I'm going to say this. Okay. I'm going to say this about. No, it, we you got biggest things to win, but uh, of course we don't we don't want to uh, point out uh, South Shore and their program. And but I understand, 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 understand. Listen, I understand y'all. Understand y'all played each other. Y'all played each other, and you know you say you spoke to them afterwards. Fine, but we don't want people, right? We don't want to give people the idea that you know somebody did something, and if they did, we want to keep that. Or, or off this program, and as the pointing finger part, you're 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 making some great points. Though I want to say this, all the things that you well, said, point, you're making some great I'm points. Making, I, I brought that up because the point that I'm making is only one person can win and one person can lose. Okay, now that you you we, we could play you today and lose, we could play you tomorrow and win. We we both two good teams. The point that 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 is the point. The point is you can't make this all about you. Okay, a coach can't make this all about them, whoever the coach is. And this is the problem. There's too many adults fighting adults. There's too many people trying to try, trying to show that that they position. No, you 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 ain't gonna win this. I I, I I'm, I'm I'm that big dog. You understand? Because again, you you give us an appeal because you know that we're in the right. You fighting the rules. Anybody hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What you said, you you. You guys got another appeal? No, I said when we had an appeal. Okay. You, don't get, you give us an appeal because obviously you, we, we're fighting your rules, right? So we had an appeal. You gave us an appeal for 5 p.m. You know what the appeal is about. But why would you give us an appeal if you already posted the PSAL and who, who's playing in a championship? Yeah, that's crazy. So
If Eagle would have won, then it would have went unnoticed that they have a 20-year-old plan. Let's keep it real. You can't do that. All right. You can't do that. Listen, grades can be changed, um, attendance can be changed, but you can't change nobody's birth certificate. And and one one last thing, that you cannot put somebody in the system, you cannot put somebody in the system with a birth date that, that is 20 years old. That shouldn't even be inputted. Somebody in the PSA office had to do that. So I'm going to leave it on that. And you, you go figure the rest. All right. Thank you. Woo! Don't pull, pull. You got a good program here. Don't, don't. I understand some people you don't want to put on blast, but sometimes when you tell the truth, it, people going to be on blast. That's just how it is. But I'm, I'm, I'm also here to make sure that we stay, we stay together as a city and this thing don't get too much out of out of control because we have to start building unity and, yeah, and, and not in the community. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. But that's, okay. but that's, but we can't be, we can't be judge, jury, and executioner, right? No, we got, we, we got to let the people, no. yes, we got to let people but who they, are here to make sure that, you know, the consequences are given out by those people who are in charge. But what we could do, we could open up dialogue and let people understand, listen, we give people in New York City a voice, but not that's a voice that's going to be in detriment to what we got going on here. Because at the end of the day, what we say out of our mouth is going to affect kids at the end of the day. Because remember, kids are listening. Well, I, I agree, but guess what? And, parent, and parents of these kids are going to step up. And this is where this is. This is where all this is coming from, the parents. This ain't coming from no teachers. This ain't coming from no coaches. This is the parents that stepped up. This is the parents that stepped up. And you, you got to understand, people know people. <laughs> At the end of the day, that's, that's what it is. Don't think that we, we got stuck back in the 80s when, when, when these players' parents was on drugs. You got you got these kids, because they in public school, these children have parents that's in high position places. So they got to understand that you can't just do what you want to do to these kids. Because if, you, if, if you're not going to protect our kids, then we got to step up and protect our kids. That's it. I'm signing off on that. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. You're welcome. All right. You said we wanted to get, give, her the, give, her the, give her the time, right? Whew. Fire. Hey, listen. This is what we said we wanted to do. Uh, thank you, uh, Gangsta Diva, for coming on and and giving us the rundown uh, on your perspective and and Jefferson's perspective uh, about what's going on. Um, again, these are words that are coming from people that are in New York City that haven't been affected by this, but we as a community, we as a community have to come together. Seriously, like if if not, this is gonna destroy everything that we have got we have going on right now. We have so many things that's happening right now in our city that's tearing the fabric of the city apart. We just had a shooting today on the train, right? I walked outside to get me something to eat. There was a car crash that happened when somebody got out of the car and shot someone and ran off and someone was laid out in the street. We got so much things going on right now. These kids are being exposed by a lot of, by a lot of things. The last thing we need is for our basketball community to be ripped apart. You know, listen, it's not about sugarcoating anything, fam. It's not about sugarcoating anything, but at the end of the day, we have a platform and we have to be responsible. That's all it's about. If you get a platform, you could do your thing and you could tell her how you want to tell it. You know, um, I was speaking to Gangsta Diva earlier. Um, text me and, you know, she had sent an email that said she wanted to come on. Um, then she decided, you know, well, she figured out she couldn't come, she couldn't get in the show. So I, I wanted to give her a voice so her voice could be heard. Just like, uh, my guy, Coach Ricky Rivers, came through and, and spoke words. Uh, Coach, uh, we had uh, Mr. Hagens came through and say some words. Mike Coach Lowry. Mike Lowry came through and say some words. So we, we just trying to open up the lines so the city can have a voice. Yeah, and Pooh, you know, I, I feel like you have to defend yourself a lot um, with some of the things people are saying. And listen, 
at the end of the day, is it productive? That That's how we kind of look at it. You know, like we have a goal, our platform, we have the same goal. We both have the same type of ego mentality and look on ego. And I'm with you 100%. We're listening to everybody. We've given a ton of opinions of our own. We've given a bunch of solutions. We've tried to bridge the gap. Um, we've gotten perspective from almost every single side, um, good and bad. And, you know, no matter what, people are always going to want more or be unsatisfied. But, you know, that that's our goal is we're just trying to bridge the gap as much as possible. And we're trying to take a day that, you know, we're going to look back on and it's not going to be a good day for the league, but hopefully it's a stepping point and it's, it's a thing that could go forward because a lot of points have been brought up tonight, but my number one thing that I keep picking up is it's kind of an adult problem. And I think it starts with us and we got to do better and really talking smack on, on comments or talking smack about other programs. It doesn't help. It really doesn't help. I mean, You know, I'm from Long Island. I could come in and bash every single team in the PSAL if I wanted, right, Pooh? I could talk about every team in the Catholic League in the city. I mean, you know, when when I was in high school, my program was the number one program in the state. You know, I don't bash other programs because they were not. You know, everyone has their own thing. Everyone has their own time, and, and things come up and down, you know, especially with the programs. So, I don't look down on them. I, I just think we could do better as a whole. And it starts with the adults. And, I, you know, I think tonight's been great. And it's given us a great perspective on a lot of things. And we hope you guys see the bigger picture of tonight. And we appreciate so many of the the positive comments and things like that. And it's so good to hear the voices of the people. And we just wish we could have more. So hopefully, hopefully Pooh has someone on the line right now. But we'll see. Yeah, I, I, another coach just called. I, I, I got to make sure I call him back. Um, yeah, listen, congratulations to the South Shore girls. Um, we didn't sh- show up tonight because there were some complications that went on behind the scenes that we won't talk about. But um, at the end of the day, we want to give a big shout out to the whole South Shore girls, staff, and team for pulling off yet another city championship win. Salute to Coach Aaron Wall who came on the show uh, last night. Salute to Coach. Um, excuse me. Uh, Fred Fortune who came on the show as well. Thank you. And everybody who came on the show and, and said their piece. Thank you. Thank you, Keisha. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, for sure. This is not about bashing anyone, any program, PSAL, anyone, all right? Um, Fortunately, these programs are getting bad publicity as well, no matter who did what. Parents who are involved may not want their kids going to these schools with all this controversy. It's going to hurt a lot of people, man. This, this, This day is a sad day in New York City history. And man, we and we we right in the middle of it, Brian. Crazy, right? It's something I never, you know, kind of. It's something I never thought was, you know, in my future. I never thought I'd have to deal with something like this, and 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 it's crazy. It's it's crazy. Like the first year that I've really like kind of gone all in on the PSAL, and and this is this is what I've kind of had to run into. It's challenging. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely uh, a sad thing, man. But, uh, you know, hopefully, again, we can make sure that we do our part and we do our due diligence um, to make sure that we could still bring unity to the city. Yeah. And this this, this is, you know, the PSL, you know, Coach Nicario was, was joking around about it. Uh, with the athletes that used to be in it. It is one of the great historic leagues of all time. And I mean, this season was one for the ages. It was so exciting um, from start to finish during the regular season. 
you know, to see guys get Division One offers in such a hard time, to see arguably the player of the year just signed in Siena, you know, guys are getting NIL deals. It's like the league is do, going such in a great direction. And then as soon as the playoff happens, just three steps back, you know. That's right. If you your first time here, please subscribe to the channel. Those people that's on Instagram, hit the link, man. Show some love. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. Sure. Share this. Share this. Share this, people. Share this. And right now, before we get out of here, we want to show some love to the Lady Vikings for pulling off yet another amazing win. This is not from today, y'all. This is not from today. Vikings. Man. What a career for those. That backcourt, huh? Thank you, Wade. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you guys for reporting on this. Otherwise, no one would know what's going on. No newspaper coverage. Just a lot of rumors and negativity. That's so real. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate you. And and that's the whole point, right? We're not here for clout. We're not here, you know, yo, this rumor happened. This is why I try to stop people from, you know, spreading rumors. Or anybody like that want to put yeah. up a, a, the stuff in the chat or anything like that. Like, this is not about that, right? If we don't be unified as a city, we fall. Mm -hmm. We fall. We fall from grace. This is the Mecca. This is the Mecca of basketball. New York City is the Mecca. I don't care what anybody's been telling you. And we are still growing. We have a lot of young talent that's out here. We have a lot of people that's still willing and able to give New York City a great name and keep our credentials up as one of the top basketball cities in the country, if not the top, for sure. And yeah, shout out to uh, Sage Media for covering the game today. Do an excellent job. Salute to my guy, Dre. For sure. Yes, and we're about to get out of here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Great yep. job. Keep the integrity of your program and stick it to your principle is vital, for sure. That's what we got to do. Poo's my rock, baby. Keeps keeps it all solid. Doesn't let anybody wear us down, man. And he won't. That's what he does, my man. That's right. Appreciate everybody who came on tonight. Thank you, uh, Gangsta Diva, for coming on. Mr. Hagens, uh, Mike Lowry, um, Coach Ricky Rivers, thank you. Thank you for stopping by. We appreciate you all in the chat. Thank you. If you haven't done so already, please, please subscribe to the channel. Please, please subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe to the channel. My God, Bullhead Buchanan, All Black, Alan Kears, Chariot Man Gaming, uh, Mo Shiesty, appreciate you. Rockin' Horse, thank you. Jay Troutman, my God, Coach uh, Will uh, Holly, appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Basil yeah, Kennedy, up. appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Jeffrey uh, Montgomery, thank you. Jess Watson, thank you. Appreciate you. Eric McCray, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Digital 100, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. 
101 or digital one. My bad. Uh, the whisker, uh, whisker. Thank you. Hope I'm saying that name right. Uh, Montana Max. Thank you. Thank you. Keisha. Thank you. My God, John Arnold. Appreciate you. CK. Thank you. Uh, Show had Tuffy. Thank you. Appreciate you. Eric Lopez. I mean, Edward Lopez. My God, Munch. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. The girls won. The girls won. South Shore won. Hoop Dreams NYC, thank you. Always. Jay Fabby, thank you. Appreciate you. Just want to give everybody a shout out, man. It's been a tough day. JR Sports, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Court B, thank you. Thank you, Court B. We appreciate you. WC, thank you. Daniel Wader, appreciate you. Thank you. BK Better, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you, ball head. Hey, coach, I'm wild, man. Shot. This is it. This is it. We're not coming back on until they get it right. And <laughs> hopefully Sunday we can report some good news for some other champions. And, you know, they let us in the building this time. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. We out of here. Hey, by the way, never forget your Costco card, everyone out there. That's my tip of the day. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You got yours? I got to show mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We out of here. Later, Pooh. Peace.